Assalamu alaikum everybody and a very warm welcome back to the Arabic with the Sound podcast. Today we're on episode 9. Um, you know, so we've been going at this for just over a couple of months now, which is pretty cool. Um, into November, it's starting to get chilly up here in Northampton. Um, good news is, I'm getting my keys today for my new house, inshallah. You know, this has been a very long and drawn out, boring process of me trying to move house. And uh, today, I'm actually picking up the keys. And uh, that's this afternoon though. So at the moment, I'm sitting in an empty living room of my old house. Pretty much just in the middle of the living room floor, um, with my phone, with my phone in front of me, and a little and a little mic, just hooked up onto my uh, onto my t-shirt. So, um, so it's a little bit low budget today, but uh, well, that won't affect the quality of the podcast. Don't you worry, it won't affect the quality of the content because um, I have actually planned something. I'm not just uh, winging it as I go along. So today, we're going to be talking about education. Um, education uh, in the Arab world and education generally and how to talk about it. You know, this is probably my first lesson where I've actually talked about like a real world, um, you know, context type stuff. Like, you know, usually Arabic teachers take one of two routes. They either take like a grammar heavy route and they teach Nahu and Sarf and Balagha. But um, and then other Arabic teachers, sort of like a more kind of modern foreign languages approach, um, you know, they teach like, you know, talking about the colours, how to go to a restaurant, how to book a table in a restaurant, how to book a holiday, how to visit the beach. And they sort of go topic by topic. And I, I like to be somewhere in the middle. You know, I, I kind of lean slightly more towards grammar, but but uh, but I like to be a bit more in the middle. So um, obviously, we're going to talk about education. We're going to talk about my um, experience in Palestine as well. Obviously, I, I went to I went to university in Palestine, and um, you know I lived there for a year, and um, and obviously being someone who's who's always been interested in education, like I always wanted to be a primary school teacher when I finished university. So I was interested in how so the education system works in Palestine and and, and in other Arab countries as well. Um, yeah, we'll talk about classroom language. We'll give you guys everything that you need to. Um, you know, to if you go to an Arab country and you start Arabic lessons in an Arabic institute or something, you'll have some language that you need to help you navigate things and to get by. So, um, first things first is the word for education is the word ta'alim. Ta'alimun is the word for education. And, um, you know, it comes from the form two verb, alama. You know, the, the root of that is ayn lam and meme is the, I think, the third most repeated um uh, root in the entire Quran, and that is sort of to do with knowledge. You know, the verb alima means to know something, but um, means to make somebody else know something. Ta'alim being education, the making of other people know things. So when you go to uh, to a classroom in the Arab world, and they do the register, they do registers out there as well. It's not it's not just a, an English thing. Although I think school uniform is pretty much just a British thing. Um, you know, like on various countries I've been to, school uniforms are not. Um, as big, although I did see it in Palestine. In Palestine, they, they well, at, at least I remember seeing the girls have these dresses, like blue and white, sort of checkered dresses that they wear to school. And um, so, um, yeah, so when you go to your class, um, the way of saying that you're present when they call out the register is you say, harder, harder. Um, yeah, that's how you say that you're present somewhere. And, um, you know, we'll kind of, I think we'll kind of run through the different kinds of school that there are. Obviously, in, in England, our, our education system is that we kind of have nursery, um, well, like play group and nursery. That's like when you're kind of under five years old. And in the Arab world, they call that hadana, hadana. Um, yeah, I remember my, my Arabic professor teaching me this and saying, hadana lil, lil babies, <laughs> hadana lil babies. Yeah, hadana is for the babies, but it's not, not just for like little babies. It's for children up to the age of like four or five. Uh, primary school, they have primary school, just the same as we do here in the UK, um, and they call it Madrasa Ibtida'iyya, Ibtida'iyya, obviously from the word Bada'a, meaning to begin, um, Madrasa Ibtida'iyya is, is primary school, and after that, I mean, Ibtida'iyya is like the, the beginning school, they don't say like, like primary or the first school in, in, in we would think it would be like Awaliyya or something, but it's not, you say Ibtida'iyya. Um, and then secondary school, you have madrasa uh, thanawiyya. Um, that's li- literally that's a li- literal translation of the term secondary school, madrasa thanawiyya. Um, and then and then afterwards, you do have this word for college, kulliyya. Um, I've had to say it loads because I, I I became Muslim when I was at when I was at college, and um, so yeah. So when I talk about how I became a Muslim and stuff like that, when I explain it, when I talk about it in Arabic, I'm always using the word kulliyya. But the term kulliyya in Arabic, it can mean a college, just like we have here in the UK, when, when people do A-levels, or IB, or they do a diploma, or whatever, and, um, 
kulliya is, is the term for that, that they have in the Arab world. But but the term kulliya can also mean like a, a faculty. Um, it can mean a, a yeah a faculty within a university. I don't know if you guys in America have that. Like you guys in America call it the call it no do you call it school though? No. You say like you went to college, you went to law college, law school. Like law school or medical school means that you went to like the medical department of a university though. I'm pretty sure that's how it's done in America, but 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 they do that in the Arab world as well. They have kulliya. So if you go around the campus of a of a university in the Arab world, you'll have like kulliyati whatever, kulliyati tib, kulliyati sharia. You know they have the school of sharia. They have the school of medicine. You know tib is medicine. Kulliyati ulum. You know the college of sciences. Kulliyati lughat wal adab. You know the 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 college of of languages and and literatures. Um, you know, and, and, and whatever else, right? They, you know, that's that, that's often what a kulliya means. Um, and then after kulliya, um, after kulliya, or instead of kulliya, there is this term diplom. It just reminded me when I said diploma. Um, if you do like a, a diploma here in the UK, they do have the term diplom for something. But I think diplom is like instead of... Um, Diplom is um, like instead of university, I think it's a bit like where here we have like undergraduate degrees. No, 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 undergraduate degrees is just a normal degree, isn't it? It's um, oh, I can't remember the term for it, but but we do have something like that here in England. England, like if you're not, if 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 you don't quite get into university, you can do like a pre-university degree kind of thing. I can't remember the word for it though, but um, but yeah. So uh, and then they also have ma'ahad, ma'ahad. Um, ma'ahad is like um, for like vocational stuff. I think um, if you go to ma'ahad, that's yeah, that's vocational. But but the term for university generally is jami'a, jami'a. Um, yeah, not it's not jami'a. Uh, there's often a confusion when people go to the Arab world between jami'a and jami'a. Jami'a is a word for a mosque. Um, you know, you can say masjid or you can say jami'a, and often the term jami'a is preferred. Um, you know, I, I just tend to notice that in Amiya, people seem to prefer the term Jamir or, or in Egypt, Gamir. Um, you know, I, t- I tend to just hear that that's preferred, but, but both are used, Masjid and, and Jamir. But the term for natural university is a Jamir with a Tetmod Balta on the end. That, that's the difference. So, um, yeah, so, so what do you learn at university? Okay, so at university, you're doing. Um, you do baccalaureus. They use sort of a derived from the English term bachelors. They say baccalaureus. Um, and then for masters, they say magister. Um, I always used to get that confused with Manchester. If they say magister, I always thought that was Manchester, but it's not. It's a, it's a master's degree, magister. Um, and then you, you do have a PhD afterwards. Like in the UK, we call that a PhD. Um, I don't know, I don't know what, the, what, what you guys in the States call it, but... I don't know if you, you call that a doctorate or something. We do call it a doctorate here in the UK as well. But um, but that's the term they use in the Arab world. They say doctora. Doctora. And um, I suppose whenever you do a degree or you if you if you ever get to that level of education, you always you always have to specialise in something. And the term for specialising in an Arabic is tachossus. Your specialism is your tachossus. You know, to literally say my specialism is tachossusi, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, like in my case, tachossusi. You know, the, my, my specialism is the Arabic language. Um, or, or, you know, even even on top of that, I suppose, mine, well, what I did, my my mashroor atakharraj, my, that, that's the term for a dissertation. Your mashroor is like your, your project, takharraj is, is graduation, like your graduation project is, they call it a mashroor atakharraj. Mine was on, um, mine was on wasf al-nusara fi rihlat ibn jubair. That was the title of my of mine that I wrote in Palestine. It means the... Wasf al-Nasara is the description of the Christians. Fi uh, ibn Jubayr. In the, in the journey of Ibn Jubayr. Um, ibn Jubayr is kind of a uh, person who came before Ibn Battuta. Ibn Battuta is probably the most famous uh, travel writer. But there were many before him and many after him. Um, who have, um, um, who have in, in my opinion, better written and more... Uh, more authentic, perhaps. Like I, I don't actually doubt the authenticity of Ibn Battuta's Rihla, but uh, a lot of people do sort of have questions about whether he went as far as he said he did, or you know, or anything like that. But Ibn Jubayr's is um, Ibn Jubayr's is pretty good. Like it's um, it's pretty sound, and it's also all written in his style, and it's all incredibly eloquent. Like the man was actually, um, the man was from Al Andalus actually, and he's traveling in like eleven, 
you know, sort of 12th century. And um, you can tell that he's like an incredibly eloquent poet when he's writing. And um, it's really amazing, actually, because he has a chapter in it, which is about the description of um, Salahuddin al-Ayubi. Because um, Ibn Jubayr actually saw him and was around at the time of the, the Crusades, which is why it's so interesting. Um, which is why it was so, which why the description of the Christians is so interesting in that book. Um, because obviously the Christians at that time were of many kinds, and uh, some of them, some of them he speaks of very very highly, um, some of them not so much. But that that's kind of a detour. That's that's me talking about the term tachosus. If you're mutachosus, mutachosus, then it means you are a you are a specialist in something. Um, yeah, or if you say I specialized to chassostu, I I, I specialized in something to chassostu fi keda wa keda in in blah blah blah. Um, yeah, so but the, but then the term to charaj is the the graduation. If you graduate from somewhere, you say to charaj to to charaj to min jamiat al najah. You know that that's the case for me. I graduated from the al najah university in Palestine. To charaj to min keda wa keda. You know from somewhere somewhere. Um, to say you graduated. So a graduation party is a haflet, haflet of tacharraj, is a is a party of graduation. So yeah, um, the last word that I wanted to mention is um, at university you often have a supervisor, you have sort of an individual who you who you submit your research to and who who aids you in your writing, and um, you know that that is called a mushrif. Your mushrif is your your person who is your. Um, um, yeah, who is who is your supervisor? Mine was um, Doctor Raed was my was my supervisor. Big shout out to Doctor Raed. Um, may Allah bless him. May Allah preserve him. Yeah, because he was a specialist in um in literature from El Asur al Wusta, um you know the the Middle Ages. So he was my he was my uh, you know he was my he was my mushrif. Nice. So that's um. Yeah, that's a little bit about education, sort of in Palestine and university specifically. But, but I want to just drop some other words in there for you, for you to be aware of. So, um, you'll often hear imperatives in the classroom. Um, iqra is one that especially Muslims would know very well. Iqra literally means read. Iqra lo samahat. Iqra min huna lo samahat. You know, read from here, please. Iqra min huna lo samahat. Um, or you'd say uktub, which means write. Uktub. You know, or if you say write it, uktub ha. Uktub halo samahat. Write it, please. So the imperative for reading is iqra, or to a woman iqra'i, and then to a man to to write is uktub. You know, write, but writing to a to a woman uktubi. Those are kind of the two main ones. Um, yeah, those are the two main ones that you'll hear in, in a classroom. Um, in addition, I mean, there are some stationery that we should probably go over, but you, you probably know the important ones. So, obviously, a qalam is a pen. Um, be be um, sensitive to what dialects you're hearing people speak in. I mean, if people are in, um, if people are in Libya or Sudan, you might hear them say "gelem," or then they say "glam." Something they they change the vowels a little bit in "glam," but um, "qalam," "qalam" is the term that a teacher who's teaching you Fushash should use. Um, a book. Oh, that's important actually. Yeah. So, yeah, one of the big steps as well between like GCSE level Arabic and A level is being able to use vocabulary for more specific things so like at GCSE you might learn the word kitab and then you use kitab for any kind of book but at A level they would expect you to know the word kitab to mean a book generally they'd expect you to know the word daftar for like a, a book that you write in like a workbook is a daftar um, they'd expect you to know the word qamus for a dictionary so you, you you should be aware of those different those different words for different types of books obviously you're likely to have different books in the classroom. So, yeah, qamus is a dictionary. Riwaya is a novel. That's important. Um, yeah, a kitab is a book. And then a kutayyib is like a little book or a leaflet. Um, yeah, you can make pretty much anything, a little version of it in uh, in Arabic by putting it into the fu'ayil pattern. Or fu'ayil pattern. Kutayyib. Um, very nice. Uh, okay, so those are some words. Oh, yeah, and another one that's important. Um, subura. A subura, spelled with a scene, is um, is a whiteboard, like a big whiteboard or a big blackboard that the teacher would have up in the you know in the, in the classroom is a subura. Um, I have heard the term lauh used. I mean, a lauh just means a tablet or a um, yeah, it's a tablet or a board or something. But it's it's but the term subura is the one that is the one that people know as being like specifically the kind of like whiteboard that you have in the classroom or blackboard you have in the classroom. Next, uh, I was going to go over some of the words for teacher. Um, it's important because people, different kinds of teachers are referred to in kind of different ways. Like a, the most generic term for a teacher is a mudarris. Um, mudarris from the verb darrasa, 
مدرسة مدرس um, yeah no, that that is literally a, a teacher the term معلم is another one as well I mean معلم um, tends to a, a معلم I've sort of heard that more for um, different specific kind of knowledge like knowledge that kind of um, it's it's more knowledge about it's more teaching you knowledge of sort of character and what is good and what is bad and like معلم is the term that's used for like a sensei karate sensei or or like Islamic teachers or a معلم as well um, yeah so it's things that are a little bit deeper um, I don't think you would you would you would, you would use a معل, the term معلم for someone who teaches you um, for someone who teaches you how to um, I don't know do times tables I don't think that is a معلم um, you know علم علم like knowledge is something a little bit deeper than than that and then there's the term أستاذ um, أستاذ is um, is the word for a teacher um, and it's actually I believe where the word أستاذ comes from in Spanish um, there is the term أستاذ in Spanish, which is a way of saying you, but but it's a bit more formal, like it's a formal way of addressing addressing someone who's higher status than you, which which would make sense for it to actually come from Arabic, because your ustad is someone who is um, sort of, of of higher status than you. Ustad is quite a generic term for teacher as well, um, but for some reason I feel like it has more of a connotation of being like a religious teacher. Your ustad, um, yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, so um, something you might hear, something else you might hear. Oh, by the way, any of those, you can make them feminine, just by adding a tap mod on the end. Mudarris is a male teacher. Mudarrisa is a female teacher. Muallim, male teacher. Muallima, female teacher. Ustad, male teacher. Ustada, female teacher. Um, you, you, you also have the term doctor. For someone who you know is a professor, like a university professor, you can call them doctor. Um, I'm not, by the way, so don't, don't go calling me that. But but you can use the term doctor for, for people who, you, as I say, you know are. Are you know professor that are professors? Um, something you might hear, um, which hopefully you will hear, is the term ascent. Now that's a really common kind of classroom expression. Ascent is like saying well done. You you have done well. You know the term hasan means good. Ahsana means to sort of do good. You know so if you say ascent, it means you you have done good. Ahsant or you have done well. Um, and then the last thing that I've written down um, is just to say that I don't understand. You know, just unfortunately, sometimes in life you have to just say, "Look, I just don't understand." So, so you just say "la afham," "la afham," or "I don't understand this," "la afham hava," I don't understand this. Or if you say, "I have understand," "fahimt," "fahimt," I've I've understood, "fahimt." You use that in the past tense, um, usually. Um, I've been I've been told that it just sounds better in the past tense to say "fahimt," and that's kind of what I've what I've noticed on my journey, as well. So, so that's everything that I wanted to cover. Um, you know, that's, that's everything that I wanted to cover. I thought it would be a really nice one. It's one that I like talking about because, um, you know, a lot of you, I don't know if any of you know, like I used to be a primary school teacher. That's like the, um, that was the first thing that I did when I came out of university. And, um, you know, since I've been packing all my stuff up to come and move house, I've, um, I came across a lot of like the, um, the gifts that the kids and their families gave me when I left being their teacher and stuff. And it's, um, you know, it's pretty deep, especially being a primary school teacher when you've got kids who are that sort of impressionable um, sweet little age, you know, I had a classroom of nine-year-old kids, I was teaching year four, so like eight, nine years old, and, um, you know, those, those guys really prepared me to be a dad, really, and, um, you know, I miss them a lot, I think about them a lot, um, it's kind of weird when you start teaching how deeply connected you get to them, like, you read out their names on the register every day, and you learn about their characters, and you learn about what their problems are, and how they behave, and, you know, you, you know just how much they look up to you, and, um, it's pretty deep, so, so education obviously means a lot to me, and that's why I'm still where I am, teaching Arabic um, for a living, and hopefully I'll do it for the rest of my life. So that's the end of this video. I'll do a little, uh, not video, sorry. Well, it will be a video. It will be on YouTube, for those of you who'd rather um, have it playing on YouTube. But um, uh, the last thing I wanted to do is just give a little shout-out to a little project that I'm launching soon. A lot of you know that my kind of my program is called Arabic in 60 Steps, um, which is where you get access to uh, my 60 video program and uh, you can work through it at your own pace it's entirely self-directed the pace of it um, you also get workbooks there are workbooks available in there that you can print off for free um, you know you can print them um, I'm uploading them to Amazon soon so just for a couple of pounds you can buy them printed and bound um, you know which is quite nice for you guys to have them in front of you be able to answer all the questions and stuff in your own workbooks and so it's just nice to have workbooks as well have things that you can physically hold makes you feel like getting more value 
I'll tell what you're paying. So, so I have that program, which I'm really proud of. That's kind of my flagship curriculum. That's what I've been spending years developing and, and teaching. But um, on top of that, for students who were prepared to invest in themselves a little bit more, who were taking the Arabic language journey a bit more seriously, I am launching Arabic with Sam Platinum, which is only available for a handful of students every year. I'm only going to take, you know, li literally a handful of students a year um, who can get access to this. And um, it will include access to a weekly um, live Q&A, a, a private one-to-one -one session every month, um, check-in calls every week to make sure that you're hitting your goals and, you know, that I'm keeping you accountable. Um, you know, so a lot of, like, premium services like that, like, you kind of get me as, like, your dedicated mentor. Um, and, um, you know, students who do that will, um, will will reach their goals a lot quicker, inshallah. Like, I think the, I think the, the most common thing is where people aren't accountable. You know, people start a program like that and they're not accountable. They don't have someone... Um, checking up on them they don't have someone answering their questions quickly you know they, they, they might feel a bit silly asking a question or something or, or whatever right but but there's just none of that for the students who are on the Arabic with Sam platinum service so so that is a very very exclusive you have to apply for it um we'll have an applicant i'll have an application form where you just tell me about your level tell me about what your goals and what your aspirations are in the arabic language what steps you've taken so far the fact that you're listening to my podcast now is a good step in the right direction that will that will that will um, weigh very heavily in your application to be accepted so so um so that's pretty cool so, so basically that's going to be available this month um, I'm still putting together some bits and bobs for it and I want to have um, a really, really kind of high quality welcome pack that I'll send you in the post with like some um, some stationery and all, all eight of the books as well, premium bound and, um, and nicely printed and stuff for you as well. Like students on that pr on the Platinum program will get all of that sort of stuff. So, so I'm getting all that together still, but it'll be this month, inshallah. Once I'm settled in my new house, once I've got my little office set up and everything, we'll, we'll, we'll get it going and I'll bring that service to you guys, inshallah. So keep an eye on the website, keep an eye on the Arabic with Sam website if you're interested in that. And, um, you know, I look forward to hearing from some of you guys and I'd love to see some of your applications, inshallah. So that's everything uh, for this episode. Uh, next week, I'm hoping to have a guest. Next week, um, I'm hoping to have a brother called Shaheen al-Rahman. He is um, one of the, or, or he may even be head of um, curriculum planning and design for Safar. Um, if you haven't heard of the Safar Islamic Studies books, they, they create um, Islamic Studies books for children and they're used in uh, madrasas across the whole country. And um, they're just really, really beautifully designed. You know, that's the thing that stands out so much to me when I, when I pick them up is that they are so beautifully designed. They're so, so well pitched. For, for children so um so we're gonna be talking about that we're gonna talk about that and his level of the arabic language and how he learned the arabic language and sort of what his journey was what he learned along the way what advice he can give to you guys and i'm, I'm looking forward to introducing him to you and so that all of you guys can benefit from him a lot um yeah he's, he's become a friend of mine over the past year or so and uh that'll be really nice for us to for, for me to introduce him to you so that's the plan uh, for next week if you have any questions for the brother um please send them in or you can dm me dm me on instagram and um yeah, I look forward to uh, checking in with you guys next Monday, if not before. There will be other videos coming out on the YouTube channel. We are coming to the end of the story of Prophet Hud, salam. We only have two more lessons um, to go for the story of Prophet Hud. I'm going to give away a free course on um, on learning the Arabic um, for reading the stories of the prophets. You know, rather than me just doing a walkthrough, you can learn the grammar that I'm using. Come at it from sort of a... Uh, um, from a different approach so I'm going to I'm going to be doing that for the story of Yusuf and that's going to be kind of a free course I'm going to send to you guys if you're interested in it and um, yeah so but but then after so the last thing that I wanted to ask you guys for was uh, after we finish the story of Prophet Huda alayhi salam in two weeks um, if you have ideas for other scriptures that you would like me to unpick you'd like me to do walkthroughs of please let me know some ideas are already on the table is perhaps a modern poem um yeah, perhaps uh, yeah, by someone like Ahmed Matar or someone like Nizar Qabbani or just or, um, or even some of some of one of the novels I've talked about before by Hassan Kanafani. He's a Palestinian author and novelist who obviously I've read a number of his books and I, I love his work. So so we've got ideas about some of that sort of poetry. Um, another idea uh, would be even like a GCSE exam paper. Um, you know, I'm happy to do a walkthrough of an Arabic GCSE exam. I don't have any interest really in teaching GCSE Arabic. I think the GCSE exam is um uh terrible um i think the exam boards fail their students i think they take your money but they fail you they put out very very little resources and um and that's why it falls to people like me who are nobodies in uh in the arabic gcse space to be answering all of your questions you know my inbox is flooded with people wanting me to support gcse students and um and it annoys me a little bit because i shouldn't have to waste my time pandering to a terrible terrible course um 
you know, just because they, they'll take your money and don't put out the resources that you guys need. But, um, but despite that, if it's what you guys want, I will do a walkthrough of the GCSE exam for you. I'll do one for an A-level as well, if that's what you're interested. Or something that might be quite nice would be to do a walkthrough of one of the texts that I did at a degree level. Might be quite cool, like a university level. And those of you guys are native speakers or whatever, or or you guys have completed a curriculum or something like that. Let's see if you guys can test yourselves, inshallah. So um, right, okay, that that's it now. I promise, that's it now. We must be coming up to half an hour episode, twenty five minute episode now. So, so that's it. That's everything from me. Uh, please make dua for me that the move and everything goes successfully. That I pick up the keys today and uh, and uh, yeah, keep me in your duas, inshallah. May Allah bless you guys. May Allah give you guys a beneficial week. Uh, may Allah bless. The process of you guys learning the Arabic language. Catch you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.